Hey everybody, this is going to be a very brief overview of heat engines and how they work in a thermodynamic sense. We're going to cover energy transfers in heat engines, efficiency of heat engines, and then we're also going to do a few practice problems involving heat engines. So, let's talk about heat. Uh, heat is also known as thermal energy, and the variable we use for heat is capital Q. Uh, basically, if we zoom in on any substance, it's going to be made out of atoms and molecules. And those mo molecules are always in motion. They're randomly vibrating back and forth, all at different speeds at different kinetic energies. Those molecules also have intermolecular bonds that hold the substances together, or at least try to. And since there's that force between the molecules, the molecules also have potential energy between themselves, just like all of the planets in the solar system have gravitational potential energy um, with each other. And heat, or thermal energy, is the energy related to this random molecular motion and these intermolecular bonds, the kinetic and potential energies of the individual molecules in a substance. Uh, unlike normal kinetic energy, the the molecules are all just moving in random directions. If you throw a baseball, all the molecules are moving in the same direction at the same speed. So it's so heat is much more random. Since it's energy, it's going to be measured in joules. And the well, what's important about heat is it always flows from a high temperature object to a low temperature object. So for example, if you place an ice cube on a pan, well, uh, the ice cube is going to eventually start to melt. And that's because heat is flowing into the ice cube from the pan. Um, if we were to remove the ice cube then and feel the pan or measure the temperature, it would be at a colder temperature. That's because it lost heat energy. Uh, basically, as we add heat, heat, well, heat is related to temperature. More heat is going to be more temperature. It's not that simple. We'll cover that later. Um, we also need to talk about the first law of thermodynamics. It's stated in many ways. Uh, but fundamentally, the first law of thermodynamics is about conservation of energy. Energy cannot be created or destroyed. It can only change forms. So the total energy uh, in the universe or in an isolated system has to be constant. Um, that's going to be really important for heat engines. So we have these two ideas, conservation of energy and this idea that heat flows from high temperature to low temperature. Now, heat is... a Heat is kind of a disordered energy, and it's not particularly useful because all of the atoms are moving in random directions. So it's hard to get work out of it. But when heat flows from high temperature to low temperature, we can actually extract some useful work out of that flow of heat. And to do that, we use a heat engine. Any, well, a car engine is a heat engine. A steam engine is a heat engine. An engine is really a heat engine. A heat engine is just any device which continuously converts heat energy to work. In this, uh, in this presentation, I'm not going to go into the mechanics of heat engines. Usually they involve some gases heating up and expanding and um, compressing. But that's not important for today. Basically, in each heat engine cycle, heat is going to flow in, some heat is going to flow out, and the engine outputs whatever energy is left as work. So in order for heat to flow, it has to go from high temperature to low temperature. So the heat that flows in, we call Q in or QH, or maybe, oh yeah, Q in or QH. And it flows in from a hot reservoir or a high temperature reservoir. That's just some higher temperature object. In a car engine, we get that high temperature reservoir by burning petroleum in the engine head. Uh, at that chemical reaction causes it to get to a very high temperature. Um, the heat is, well, excess heat is exhausted into a cold reservoir or a low temperature reservoir. And we call that heat that Sorry, leaves... I'm not sure about that. That was Alexa. We call that heat that leaves our uh, engine Q out, or maybe QC, or possibly even QL. Mm -hmm. In a car engine, the low temperature reservoir is going to be the air outside of the car. It's going to be lower temperature than the inside of the engine. And whatever's left over, the engine outputs as mechanical work, which in a car is used to oscillate pistons that are linked to an axle, which causes your wheels to spin. Now, in order to continuously run, the engine can't heat up, which means 
that it can't have any extra energy at the end of an engine cycle. So for an ideal engine, the first law of thermodynamics, or conservation of energy, is going to apply, which means the total energy going in, which in this diagram is QH, is equal to the total energy going out, which in the diagram is QL, or the output heat, plus the useful work that's done. And we're going to use this diagram. It's called a Sankey diagram. We could also talk up, call it an energy diagram or a black box diagram uh, to help us understand and analyze heat engines. The efficiency of a heat engine, or really any engine, is just the useful output over the total input. And for an engine, the useful output is the work that it does. Uh, and the input is going to be the heat that comes in, in this case, QN or QH. We, we can also talk about efficiency in units of power, useful output um, power over total input power, which would just be the power out used to turn the wheels or in producing useful work over the input heat power. So let's do a few practice problems. A steam engine expels 885 joules of heat each cycle and does 268 joules of work each cycle. How much heat is absorbed each cycle and what is the efficiency of the engine? So let's sketch out a energy diagram or a black box diagram or an engine diagram. Uh, so we know that some heat is going to come in, Q in. We know that some heat is going to go out, Q out. And we know that some work is also going to be output. W. It tells us how much work is done to 68 joules. We know how much, uh, it says 885 joules of heat are expelled, so that's Q out, 885. And we can actually use this diagram to find the input because the total energy in has to equal the total energy out. We just add up work plus Q out to get Q in. So that's 268 plus 885 joules. Q in is going to be um, 1153 joules. So 1153 one, joules. The efficiency of, efficiency of the engine, eta, is going to be the oops, is going to be the useful output over the input. So that's going to be the work over the input, which is just 268 joules over 1153 joules. 268 over 1153 is just 0 0.232, 0 0.2, 0 0.232. Or we could also write it as 23.2%. Okay, let's take a look at the next one. It says problem three, uh, even though it's the second one. An engine is 14% efficient. It absorbs heat at 1180 joules per second. Find the power that the engine outputs as work. Find the power expelled by the engine as heat in capital W, which is watts. So here's our engine. It tells us how much power is absorbed. So I'm going to call this P in. Uh, it's 1180 joules per second, or 1180 watts. There's going to be a power out. And there's going to be some power for work. So I'm going to call that PW for power. I'll put it as work. Well, we know our engine is 14% efficient. And since we know the total input, we can use that to find the power output for work. We do eta equals useful output, which is work, so that's going to be power due to work, over total input, power in. If we solve that for the power from work, we get power from work equals eta, our efficiency, times power in, which is equal to 14% or 0 0.14 times 1180 watts. Power from work equals Um, it's like 165 watts. So I'm going to fill that in my diagram here. 165 
watts. And we also need to find the power expelled by the engine as heat in watts. Well, we know total energy in equals total energy out, so we could write that as also total power in equals total power out. P in equals PW plus P out. So what is going on? Um, so our output power is just going to be the difference of it's going to we're experiencing some technical difficulties here so our output power is just the difference of uh, the input power and the work so 1180 minus 165 Some serious technical difficulties. 1180 minus 165 equals uh, 1015. That's that. This is actually problem three. An engine with an output of 225 watts has an efficiency of 38%. It operates at 16.5 cycles per second. How much work is done in each cycle? How much heat is absorbed in each cycle? And how much heat is given off in each cycle? So we can draw our heat engine diagram in terms of uh, works and energies or in terms of powers. Since all three of our questions are about individual cycles, works and energies, I'm going to sketch it out in terms of works and energies. Q in, Q out, and work. But what we're given is the output uh, output power. So that's going to be the work that's outputted. So power due to work is 225 watts. And we know that there are 16.5 cycles per second. So 16.5 cycles per second. Um, so if we want to find the total power output, the total power output is just going to be the power output for one cycle. Power, sorry, that is the um, that is the energy per cycle per cycle. Really, let's call it what it is: the work per cycle times the cycles per second. Um, so I can plug those in to find the work done per cycle. Um, and the, well, what I get is left side is 225 watts equals work per cycle times 16.5 cycles per second. So I just divide 225 225 over 16.5 to get my work per cycle. 225 over 16.5. Now I get 13.6 joules. So that's going to be my work output. 13.6 joules. Okay, next up we need to find how much heat is absorbed in each cycle, and we're going to use efficiency for that. Eta equals useful output work over total input, so Q in, which implies that, if we solve it, Q in equals work, um, work divided by eta. So that's equal to um, 13.6 over... 0 0.38 35 35.8 35.8 joules 35.8 joules just wants to really end that slideshow um, so 
uh, 35.8 joules. If we want to find our output power, then all we have to do is subtract off our input minus our work um, because the total energy in has to equal the total energy out. So Q out is equal to Q in uh, 35.8 minus 13.6, which is equal to 22.2, 22.2 joules. And that's that. We solved a three-parter problem. Hopefully that was helpful. Um, this uh, should also be really useful for the quest. Bye.